We are flying over the ice fields, just north of Juneau. It's summer, it's warm, and we are ecstatic. What a view! We're here with Duncan, Taylor, Madison, and Rachel, who celebrated her 40th birthday a few days ago. Although the snow is new, the glacial ice underneath has been here for a very long time. Let's take a look around. If you fall, Madison, you take everyone down with you. Fifteen thousand years ago, the watery trail known as Alaska's Inside Passage was locked in an icy embrace. As the land warmed, rivers sprang up, leaving behind massive glaciers that exist to this day. It's time to head back to Juneau and to pack for our trip home. This is our last day in Alaska. So, let's start at the beginning. Located along the southeast coast of Alaska, 900 miles from Seattle, this fertile land is home to many species of wildlife, including bears, whales, seals, and sea lions. After spending a day in Juneau, we'll travel down to Cake, home to a salmon hatchery, and up to Endicott Arm to visit the famous glacier. Thank <laughs> you. 
Juno was founded in 1879 by Joseph Juno after the discovery of a vast treasure of gold bearing quartz. Mining lasted until the 1940s, yielding several hundred million dollars in gold during its 60 year history. This town of less than 40,000 people became the capital of Alaska in 1906. But we did not come to Alaska to shop. We came to discover the natural wonders of this pristine wilderness. Our home for the five days spent exploring Alaska's Inside Passage was the 60-foot Glacier Seal, owned and operated by Mark Choquette, a highly competent mariner and a great personal guide to this most magic of places. Thanks to Colette, eating great food was a highlight of the trip. So was playing games and napping during the many hours spent looking for whales. Thanks, Kelly, for helping to make this a great experience for all of us. There were three levels on the boat. The lower level was for sleeping. The middle level was for eating, playing games, and hanging out. And the top level provided a great place for viewing whales. There are whales all around us, some coming right up to the boat. They are feeding, but not in groups. These whales spend the winter in Hawaii and Mexico, making the 4,000 mile migration to Alaska each summer to feed on herring. Individual whales can be identified by the unique markings on the underside of its fluke. The bubbles blown by the whale are used to herd and disorient the herring, making them easier to catch. Come right underneath this gill plate there, and that hard spot I had you feel right there, you bring the hook right up straight through the middle of it like that, okay? Then you finish pulling the slack out of the line, okay? Just like that. It cinches it all up like that. You see that? Taylor is fishing for salmon, using herring as bait. The boat is trolling slowly to attract the fast moving fish. One's got that weight, you gotta get the weight all the way up to the top of the pole and then pull it back and then he'll be close enough that I can uh I can net
that's tonight's dinner. Way to go, Taylor. It looks like we're having a run here. Duncan has a bite. I got a bite. I know I did. Is that one here? Wow, another beautiful salmon. Probably about 12 to 15 pounds. They got big spots there on the back. Yeah. Let's see the bright silver on his tail yeah. right there. Don't always get a chance to save the day. Madison is letting out the line. She's bottom fishing for halibut. It's going down again. Too hard that way? Do you want to keep doing that up and down? They can grow quite big, so rather than getting pulled over the side, she wisely gave the rod to Kelly. Oh, Wow! That one probably weighs more than 150 pounds. Raise him up, raise him up, raise him up. Oh, oh. oh. No. No. Is it gonna float up? Food for the crabs. And everybody say yay. That was an exciting skip ride, giving us a chance to get off the boat for a walk along this beautiful shoreline. It's almost happy hour, so we'll anchor here for the night in Tracy Arm, a few hours from Dawes Glacier. It's quiet and beautiful. We are so lucky to be here. Before we head back to the boat, we'll go a bit further up the arm, bucking the fast-moving current. That's dramatic. We are at the end of Endicott Arm where Dawes Glacier spills out into the bay. This glacier has been receding rapidly over the last several years and has pulled back thousands of feet in just the last 10 years. The small icebergs that result from calving highlight the summer landscape in the strait near Endicott Arm. 
These ice sculptures provide wonderful material for the still life photographer and the perfect way to chill the evening martini. Cheers. Ice flows from Dawes Glacier provide a home for the harbor seals who maintain a healthy population in this part of Alaska. They are usually solitary hunters in the water, dining on fish, squid, and crustaceans. But here they congregate in the hundreds. A trip to Alaska would not be complete without a trip to a salmon stream during the spawning season. In a few weeks, these salmon will spawn and then die, completing the cycle that began here a few years ago. This male bear looks very healthy. He's probably fat on salmon. When the stream is filled with salmon, black bears eat only the fat-rich skin and brains leaving the carcass for others. Whoops! That didn't work. He doesn't look very interested in fishing today. Perhaps he'll try another day. No sooner did the male leave when this mother and cub appeared. Mating season is from May to July, and they usually den high up in the mountains from October to the beginning of May. They eat both meat and vegetation, with front canine teeth like wolves and back molars like humans. She does not look very fat and will probably try her luck at fishing. But just in case the male returns, she will send her cub to hide in a nearby tree. Unlike the brown or grizzly bear, the black bear is an agile climber. The Stella sea lion can reach a length of more than 10 feet and weighs up to 2,500 pounds. It is the largest sea lion species. These animals are very gregarious, but the dominant male can be aggressive in protecting his harem. This is a threatened species, declining in population due to depletion of their food supply. 64,000 live in Alaska out of a worldwide population of only 120,000.